You got a lot of cats. Never think about strays. World's greatest detective, everybody. At one point during the Batman, Batman goes to the Iceberg Lounge, a known local hideout for the Penguin, and knocks on the door only to be greeted by two thugs. They then close the door on Batman, and Batman proceeds to go in anyways and kick ass. This is somewhat symbolic in that soy boy internet cucks will hate on this film because it's Robert Pattinson and will figuratively close the door on him and not watch a film based on this alone. But like the Batman, Pattinson will walk in anyways and take his place in pop culture as possibly, dare I say, the definitive Batman. The Batman starts with sheer brutality that one would most likely find in a horror movie like Saw in order to welcome you to a new universe that is somewhat familiar but also very different. It has everything that makes a Batman story, a Batcave, familiar characters from comics, and the tragic backstory that makes Bruce become the Batman. It's established early on that he has been fighting crime for at least two years already. Gotham PD are still on the fence about him, and criminals are definitely afraid of him when the bat signal is in the air. Nolan used some of these elements in his trilogy, Matt Reeves has perfected it in a realistic and grounded approach. And it's due to this grounded approach to why this movie shines brighter than the rest, largely in part to the main antagonist in that of the Riddler. No more is the Riddler portrayed as an over-the-top villain like Jim Carrey almost 20 years ago, but instead as a homicidal genius that's more in the veins of the Zodiac Killer and the BTK Killer, both killers that are very much real. Paul Dano is terrifying and unsettling his portrayal as a Riddler that grabs the audience's attention so much so it's hard to look away. Which is pivotal to the plot as the Riddler leaves clues for the Batman throughout the film. This is a welcome change since most people know the Batman as an intellectual ass kicker first and the world's greatest detective second. Matt Reeves has switched that narrative around as most of the film features Pattinson in the iconic scene for roughly 80% of the film working alongside Jim Gordon played by Jeffrey Wright and Zoe Kravitz playing Catwoman, which, to be honest, I feel is a scene ceiling performance by Miss Kravitz. Both of them reluctantly work together at times with the Batman in order to solve riddles and gather information in order to prevent more deaths, all the while unraveling a greater mystery pertaining to Gotham's history, but also the legacy of Bruce Wayne himself. And let's address that right now. Robert Pattinson plays Bruce Wayne differently from everyone else. Instead of being a playboy philanthropist like Christian Bale or George Clooney, or an office man like Ben Affleck, his Bruce Wayne is one that doesn't really give a damn about any of them. He's an angry recluse that just wants to be left alone to his own brooding which drives him to seek vengeance and justice in his own way at the expense of his health and sanity. Robert Pattinson's portrayal knocks it out of the park and may be his defining role yet. Which is saying something since I thought he wouldn't be able to top his performance in The Lighthouse. Of course, some people will probably never accept him due to his role as Edward from Twilight, which is a damn shame since they are missing out on a very faithful incarnation of Batman and an unfaithful version of Bruce Wayne at the same time, if that makes any sense. Clocking in at almost three hours, you would figure it would hurt this film, but that is not the case. The runtime actually helps tell a great thriller mystery story along the lines of the movie 7, except instead of Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman, it's Jim Gordon and the goddamn Batman. Having previously seen Matt Reeves grounded approach to the Planet of the Apes franchise, I'm eagerly awaiting to see where he takes this franchise next. There are clues in this film, but he has said in interviews that nothing is concrete right now, so don't have high hopes just yet in regards to a sequel. What is concrete is that HBO Max has two spin-offs in the works focusing on Gotham PD and Colin Farrell's The Penguin, which I have to say I'm eagerly awaiting after watching this film. Matt Reeves has created a new branch of the DC multiverse, but it is one that I hope is revisited for years to come, and one that will not only continue to influence future superhero movies, but also movies that true crime fans will love as well. Now comes the question, is the Batman too good? Yes. The Batman, directed by Matt Reeves, starring Robert Pattinson, Zoe Kravitz, and Paul Dano, now in theaters.